Hello and welcome back to the channel. So in this video we're going to be taking an extension um, I've built before that was built for Chrome and we're going to convert it into an extension for Firefox. So I made a video similar to this before but things have changed a little bit since this. So we're going to do an updated one for 2024. So if I move over to the corner here you can see uh, this is the extension that we're going to be working with. So it's basically uh, a way to remove distractions when it comes to uh, tweets and things here. So rather than showing the home feed, it gets replaced with this area just here. Um, we're not going to go into detail on what the extension does, but if you want to see it, there's another video. I'll put a link to it in the description that goes into more detail about um, that specific extension. So the first thing we need to do is uh, make sure we have our zip file for our extension that we've built for Chrome. Um, this is going to be using manifest version three as well, which has a couple of uh, differences that we need to look for. So the first thing we need to do is go to this uh, page here which gives you information on um, some useful links and things that, that you might need for this. Um, I'll put a link to this in the description as well but it's on the extensionworkshop.com uh, for Firefox. So what we'll find here is that there's a number of things um, that we can use to first check if our extension is compatible with Firefox if there's any changes that we need to make before we can go ahead and, and package it up and actually upload it uh, as a Firefox add-on. So the first thing we can do is go to this extensiontest.com and we need to uh, select our CRX file. So if you have your extension like I do already on the web store, you can go over to your web store uh, page here for your extension and just download the CRX file. So if I just click that, it's gonna download. You might have to give it special permissions because um, it detects it as a weird file type. So I just, yeah, it will ask you this just here. I'm just gonna say download. And then we should now have access to that. So if we come back, into here, I should be able to select that file. Yeah, it's to this one just here. Okay, so once you've selected it, you will need to go ahead and submit. So I'll do that just now. And that's gonna go through and just check um, based on the manifest and the information that you have, if there's any changes that you need to make. So you can see here, our extension is compatible, which is great. So you can just click here and see exactly what is uh, what it's shown that you might wanna look into. So the first thing that it's detected is our manifest version. So because we're using manifest version three, um, in this example, there's a few changes we need to make. So they're quite small changes, but they're things that we need to actually look for. Um, so for example, we need to make sure that we have an extension ID, which we'll look at in a moment. Um, this one here we can we can ignore really, but that's that's why it's showing these ones underneath. Um, and then there's a specific one here about the, the icon size. Again, I think that one's, that one's safe to ignore, but it's more making sure you have a specific icon for each individual size rather than what I'm doing, which is just one icon, you know, adjusted for all different sizes. Um, and then we have something here about the way uh, the script is grabbing uh, content from the page, which again, this makes sense. It's probably a good change to make. Um, depending on what your what uh, Chrome APIs your extension is using, you may see more things here. Um, and if you have any questions on those, please feel free to leave a comment below and we can uh, I can take a closer look. Um, but for this one, we just need to make some small changes. So I'll open up uh, my extension now in VS Code and we can take a look. So this is what we have uh, for our extension. There's a couple of changes we need to make for Firefox here. So you can see we have a content script that is going to be uh, injecting uh, into Twitter. You can see Twitter or x.com depending on, you know, what domain they're using at this point in time. But at the way we have this at the moment, this is uh, an optional permission um because of the way it's in the content script so if we were to try and load this uh right now in firefox so if i save this go into firefox go to about uh debugging and then go to this firefox then load temporary add-on we can get a look we can take a look at what this extension will actually be like so we just need to go into our this is the folder i have the extension in then we're going to click manifest.json here so just open the manifest file so we'll open that and that's now found uh, the extension. We're in user manifest version three here and this isn't fully supported yet on Firefox. When we go to Twitter, you can see the extension uh, isn't running even though we have it added here. So all we need to do for this extension is just change it back to manifest version two. Um, but as you can see, the main reason for this is we're using host permissions just here, but we should actually be using permissions um, so if we were to try and use this now, so we'll come back, um, remove this, load temporary add-on. You can see we're gonna get these warning informations because that's not valid uh, in Man3. 
But if we were to try and load our extension, you can see it's still not uh, not going to open. So if we were to change this back now to manifest version two, this isn't really the best example. This will work for for my extension here because it's like I said, it's a very simple extension. It's just adding this uh, into here. So if I was to come back now, remove this, and load it, uh, and then go, you can see it's now going to take effect. Um, whereas before, it was going to be uh, you can see this is the information here. But if we had this again, like we had originally, manifest version three and host permissions, what basically is happening is we'll remove and add again. What was happening is as soon as you come to Twitter here, you need to have some type of onboarding flow um, if you want to use manifest version three um, to basically request this permission in the flow of. Uh, running the extension. Um, the other problem though is that service workers aren't uh, supported yet either in Firefox. So if you are going to be uh, you know, wanting to add Firefox support, it's probably best to keep that at the moment. Um, so what's it now? It's like January uh, 2024. It's still best to keep manifest version 2 when it comes to Firefox. Um, so it could mean that you have to support uh, multiple versions of your extension at the moment. Um, but now that we have our extension here running uh, on Twitter. So the way I had this in the end was, like I said, to show it for manifest version two. We're changing this back to permissions and this now should work when we come back here. So we're gonna reload, come to Twitter. We haven't had to click anything up here. You can see it's automatically set. Um, so we have our extension now that's, that's working. Um, one other thing I'd wanna mention though, if you are using manifest version three, we would need to add um, some browser uh, specific uh, options into our manifest down here as well. The reason for this, so we would need something like this. So if we just do that, we need to set an ID for our extension. Now, we don't need this because we use a manifest version two, but if you did want to go down the manifest version three route, you would need to make sure you set an ID. Um, I couldn't find any like really specific docs on the format needed, but all the examples show it as like this almost like an email address type format. Um, so the way I've sort of done that here is just the name of the extension roughly, uh, and then at something to do with um, the developer. So in this case, Rusty Do extensions. Um, and then I've set a strict minimum version. So this here is uh, Firefox version 109, which was the first version that they supported uh, manifest version three in the way that they support it. Um, but if you are going to be using manifest version two, you don't really need to add this in here. So we'll save this now and we're going to run a command so it can create a build of our extension. So you can see up here, I have this web uh, extension artifacts. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this because what we're going to do now is it's going to create that. So if we jump back over to the docs over here, you can see a reference here of uh, web extension or web ext, you can see this web extension tool just here. Yeah, so we need to do first is just install this globally. So it's just npm install global web ext. Um, and once you've got that, um, you're ready to, to move on to this next step. So what we're gonna do now is come into here, go into the terminal and we're gonna run web ext version. So you can see, if I can uh, type this correctly, you can see I'm on version 7.9.0. Um, so depending on when you're watching this video, that might have changed. Um, but all we really need to do now is run WebEXT build. And that has created this uh, folder up here with our extension ready uh, to upload. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go over to our uh, page just here. So you can see when you're ready, you can create an account on addons.mozilla.org and submit your extension. Um, so there's a couple of ways you can go about creating that zip file just there. So I used the uh, the web ext build uh, CLI, but you can, you know, there's, I'll put a link to this in the description as well, but you can just zip it up normally, uh, you know, as you would in, in other ways, or there are like GitHub actions where you can do this as part of a uh, CI flow as well. Um, but for this example, we're going to keep it really simple. You can either use that uh, CLI command or um, literally just package it up just making sure you don't include uh, you know, folders like uh, .git or you know, big files that you don't actually need uh, in your extension. Node modules, for example, you don't need to include that. 
Um, so you want the built finished version of your extension. Then we're going to go to uh, the actual submit page. So once you've logged in uh, and created your account, you'll be able to get into this page here. So again, I'll put a link to this. Uh, it's addons.mozilla.org. And then depending on where you are, there'll be a submit distribution page that you'll go to. Again, all of the links for this are in the description. And then it gives you these two options. So basically the difference between these are, do you want them to be, your extension to be listed on addons.mozilla.org or do you just want your extension to be signed by Mozilla and you can release it yourself? Um, so it depends what way you'd want to go about this. I'm going to choose on this site so we can actually get uh, you know more impressions for our extension listing on the Firefox uh, add-on site. So we're going to select this and then press continue. What we need to do now is select that zip folder uh, the zip files, this is the one that's just been built for me by the CLI. So it's in here, so it's the web ext artifacts and there's the extension just here. So I'm going to select that. It's going to go through and validate it and make sure that everything is uh, ready to be to use. We can see here we have one uh, warning here which is based on the same uh, information from this. So when we ran this, since we ran this the first time we've changed our manifest version. So that's where there's a slight difference between these uh, two messages. And then, then it's going to ask if we want to run this on Firefox or Firefox for Android or both. Uh, I have a video coming soon on Firefox for Android. Um, but for now, just going to select Firefox and continue. And what it's going to ask now, um, some specific questions about the code that we're using in our extension. So are we using any code generators or minifiers, any tools that combine multiple files, you know, things like Webpack, uh, are we using any templating engines? Uh, I'm going to actually say no here because my extension is very, very, very simple. It's literally just a CSS file and a JS file. Um, so again, this probably wasn't the best example, but I want to keep it really, really simple um, for the general flow here of what you are likely to see, depending on what your extension is using. There may be slightly different questions uh, for you here. Um, but no, we'll just go to continue. Now it's going to ask for the name of our extension. So you can see here this is pulled straight from our, uh, our package dot, our manifest file, similar to if you're publishing this on the Chrome Web Store. Um, and then it's going to ask for your description. Again, I'm going to bring over the exact same uh, listing information from the Web Store here. And then I'm just going to choose, where is it, social and communication. I don't think there's any specific I need to really add here. Um, if you used like wider permissions, like the uh, URLs permission, for example, you'd need to state in here why you need that permission. Um, my extension here is quite quite a simple one, like I say, so I can just uh, submit this version, and now that is uh, off for review. So it's uh, quite straightforward. And then now I can go ahead to manage my listing. Um, and add an actual icon and things like that. So if I was to go ahead and add uh, my custom icon, here it is, my uh, horribly designed icon. Um, we can add screenshots as well, so I can bring them over from my listing. Okay, so there we have two uh, screenshots and we're gonna save those changes. So we can now see now that our listing is starting to uh, come together a little bit more. You can view your, your product page as well. This is how we look on here. So we have our icon, we have our, our title here, we have our username, we have our screenshots and our about information. And it also mentions the uh, permissions that this extension will use as well. Like we say, said before when we were showing in our, our manifest file, these are uh, you know, the exact permissions that we've requested. Um, and then we have you know more information down here. So depending on exactly uh, what uh, you know, permissions and things your extension is using, this might be slightly different. Um, but if we come back in here now, we should be uh, pretty much in a good place to be able to uh, have this submit. We just need to obviously wait for our review to, to complete. So you can see here, yeah, we're still awaiting review at the moment, um, but once it will be, uh, this will be ready for people to, to download. So if you have any questions on uh, you know, going through this flow, feel free to leave a comment below. Um, but hopefully this covers 
the steps that you would need to take when it comes to actually taking your extension that you've built for Chrome, moving it across to Firefox. And like we saw, it does help at the minute if it is in manifest version two, which sort of conflicts with all of the changes to move things across manifest version three, but hopefully uh, this will change in the near future. And I'll be sure to update uh, uh, the comments of this video in the description. Um, and I'll also make a new video when any of these changes uh, are in place as well.